Are you sleeping with your children instead of your husband? Because that's a problem. I'm Sheila from To Love, Honor, and Vacuum, the blog where we like to make sure that marriage does not feel like a to-do list, but instead a passionate adventure. And I like to take questions that you send in and answer them. So here's another Ask Sheila video, and we are going to go to a question that I recently got from a husband. And he says, I have been sleeping alone for the last eight years. My wife started sleeping in our baby's room when our baby was born because we were having stressful times. Things got better between us, but my child got start, got used to sleeping with my wife. Four years later, we had another beautiful child, and that child began sleeping with my wife too, and that child also has become very accustomed to sleeping with mom. I have already been through one divorce with kids because of substance abuse issues with my ex. I am staying with my current wife now only because I don't want to have another family destroyed by divorce. We have no private moments together, no intimacy. I don't even remember what my wife looks like without clothing since we're never alone. How do I stay in this marriage? Or am I even allowed to move on? Women, what in the world are we doing? Sleeping with our kids instead of our husbands. Like you didn't marry your children, okay? You married your husband and sleeping with an eight-year-old and a four-year-old isn't good for that child. So I just want to talk about co-sleeping for a minute. And I know that not all co-sleeping is the same and many of you sleep with babies and I'm not going to put that in the same category. But let's just take a big step back here for a minute and take a look at our sleeping arrangements, okay? You know, when babies are born, it is exhausting. And if you're nursing at night, it is so much easier, I understand, to have the baby in bed so that they can nurse while you're still lying down. I have to give a caveat here, since my husband is a pediatrician, and he would always say that the Canadian Pediatric Society and the American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend co-sleeping. They recommend putting the baby in a bassinet in your room until six months of age. So, until basically until they can roll over. Okay, so with that caveat, Okay, that's his point of view. I will say I understand, uh, you know, wanting to sleep with the baby. I understand all that. But, and there's a big but here, that should be a temporary thing. And if you find yourself sleeping in another room away from your husband or sending your husband in another room so that you can sleep with the kids on a long-term basis, that's not healthy. It really isn't. The best thing that you can give for your child, the best gift you can give them is a stable marriage relationship. What your child really needs is for your marriage to be rock solid. And that is really hard to do if year after year after year goes by and you're sleeping with your kid instead of your husband. Okay, this is just wrong. And this is not the only email that I've gotten like this. I wrote a post a couple of years ago on the blog where another husband sent in a question where his wife was sleeping with a two-year-old in the two-year-old's bedroom and he was he just didn't know what to do. And so I, I said, you know, this isn't right. Let's talk to your wife about it. And all kinds of women wrote in comments telling the guy he had to grow up. That's not appropriate, ladies. That really isn't. You need to sleep with your husband because it's your husband who's your partner. It's your husband that you're married to. Now, I know that when babies are small, they don't want to get out of your bed and they don't want to go in the crib. And a lot of us feel, but because my baby doesn't want to, then if I put them in the crib, I am doing something bad for them. But you know, your baby wants to do a lot of things that aren't good, that isn't good for the baby. I mean, if you, that's one of the reasons they tell you to feed your baby vegetables before you start feeding them fruit, because if you introduce them to fruit before vegetables, they won't want to eat the vegetables. They're going to want to do the easy thing. <laughs> so of course your child is going to want to sleep with you. But sometimes that isn't necessarily because they need to sleep with you as much as it is that you've trained them to need you for sleep. Um, like, think about it this way. I have a Fitbit on, okay, here's my wonderful Fitbit, and it keeps track of how I sleep. And as when I look at it in the morning, it shows me how many times during the night I actually woke up for a split second. I don't remember those times, but it shows me that, yeah, you woke up at 1.10 this morning, and you woke up again at 3.15 this morning. But what happens when, we're, when we wake up in the middle of the night? We roll over and we go back to sleep. But if you woke up in the middle of the night and your pillow wasn't there, would you be able to roll over and go back to sleep? Probably not, because we associate our pillow with sleep and we need our pillow to sleep. Well, whatever you train your baby or child to need to sleep, then when they wake up in the middle of the night, if they don't have that thing, 
they're going to need it. And so they're going to call for it. So what we did, you know, what I did with my oldest daughter um, was I used to nurse her to sleep all the time. And then even when she was capable of sleeping through the night without nursing, when she woke up, she would need me to nurse her to go back to sleep. And that just meant that I wasn't getting any sleep. Um, with my younger daughter, when she really didn't sleep very well at the beginning at all. And we used to put her in a swing to put her to sleep. And then if she woke up and the swing wasn't swinging, she would cry. And so we were forever winding that stupid swing up just because we thought it might give us another 25 minutes of sleep because we had taught her to associate certain things with sleep. And then we had to teach her not to do that. And then they started sleeping so well. You know, this idea that your child needs to sleep with you or else they're not going to feel close to you. That actually isn't true. You know, when you look at one, one and a half year old babies, my kids did not sleep with us and they were absolutely firmly, totally attached. We could put them in the crib, they would gurgle, they would go to sleep on their own, they would sleep through the night, They, when they woke up they would be happy. You could often hear them in their room talking to themselves. I remember I would listen to Becca when she was 14 months old and she would just be babbling before she would decide to call for me, sometimes for 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, it's not that they were upset. And I, what really solidifies your relationship with your child is the talking that you do with them during the day and the way you cuddle them during the day. They don't need you to sleep with them to stay emotionally healthy. I had to get them sleeping on their own and they did. They were, they, they learned how to sleep Free, you know, we had to do a little bit of work, but they did learn how to sleep. They were happy sleepers and they were so happy during the day. And I was happy because I got sleep, which is important. And my husband was happy because we were together. So these things matter. You know, if you teach your child that your child can't sleep unless you're physically rocking them, then when they wake up in the middle of the night, they're going to need you to physically rock them. I had a friend who couldn't put her child down for naps. She would have to hold her for two hours every afternoon because she had taught her child that what her child needed to sleep was this. Now, what happens if you actually like the idea that your child needs you? You know, you hold them and you rock them and you soothe them and, and you just love the idea that your child needs you. I think sometimes we cling to that a little bit too much and we put way too much emotional pressure on our kids because if they need us, then that makes us feel important. And when we're having marriage issues, when we're not necessarily getting our emotional needs met in our marriage, sometimes we can put those emotional needs on our kids. And that feeling like we're being needed, that's a really intoxicating feeling. And it can make you feel like, yes, I'm okay, I'm doing all right, I'm doing well as a mom because she needs me. But like I said, what your child really needs is for you and your husband to be together. They do, like you're, that's what your kids need. And your child can get all the emotional stuff they need from you without being in your bed, especially when they're four or when they're eight. But your child also cannot bear all of your emotional needs. You can't get them met through your kid. That's just too much pressure to put on your child. And it may not seem like you're putting pressure on them because your child will love you and will hug you and will give you all this great feedback. But it's not actually emotionally healthy for your child in the long run, especially as they're getting older and older, to be sleeping with you and to be your emotional support instead of learning that it's okay to be their own person and it's okay to start growing apart from mommy. That's an important thing for kids to do. My husband talks to a lot of co-sleeping parents, like people who believe in the family bed with all of the kids in there with mom and dad, or more likely with the dad somewhere else and mom with all of the kids. And almost invariably, the mom is really on board, but when you get the husband and you talk to him separately in my husband's, in my husband's office, the dad will say, I want the kids out of there, but she's not listening to me. And the mom will give all of these reasons why it's emotionally best for the child to be in bed with them, but you know, she's not necessarily listening to the husband. And I have spent a lot of time on my blog over the last few weeks talking about why sex is supposed to be for both, both people and we're not supposed to just look at the husband's needs. We, you know, we need to look at the wife's needs too. And so here, please hear me on this one. I don't just mean the world is supposed to look after the women's needs. I mean, both of you matter. And if we're gonna say both of you matter so that he has to look after your needs, then both of you matter so that you need to look after his needs too. He matters. And if he wants to sleep in his own bed with his own wife, that's okay. Like that's a good thing. And so ladies, please don't let being a mom take over to the extent 
that you're not also a wife first, okay? Because you're gonna be a wife even when the kids are gone. And I hear so many women saying, yeah, my husband doesn't need me the way my kids need me. No, your kids need you and your husband to be rock solid. And so if that relationship is gone a little bit off base and you've been putting so much of your emotional energy into your kids, I have a, I have a really helpful thing that can help you emotionally reconnect with your husband. It's a free email course. It's five weeks long. Each week on the Monday, I give you a new challenge, just something that will help you grow emotionally closer. It's not about sex, okay? Sex will come later once you feel close again, but it's going to help you feel closer so that you can start to rebuild that relationship if it's been fractured. So I am here to give you permission to put your kids to sleep in their own room once they're able to sleep through the night. Now, I'm not talking about newborns. I'm talking about older kids. And especially once they're, you know, late toddlers and, and beyond those toddler years, be with your husband. He's the one you're married to, and he's the one that you should be lying beside at night.